Hey everybody, welcome into the Sports Fanatic Sportscast. I am Joe Boric, joined by the wonderful Steel Flyers, the Don of the website, as we call them. Um, <laughs> figured that would get a nice laugh as we oh, boy. <laughs> in the first episode. Um, but, you know, uh, we're going to roll into, we'll go with some basketball news uh, first, because I wrote an article, if you want to check it out, on Pub Sports about the Utah Jazz before I go into Homer Central and talk about my team. Um, I'll go talk about a team I also <laughs> enjoy watching in the Utah Jazz. I mean, they're 25-6. and six. Uh, You got a wonderful basketball team in Utah. I mean, Donovan Mitchell, since he came into the league, and I will say this outright, basketball is like probably my fourth sport to like follow, yeah. but this team, just because of that dude, and he's just a legit bucket, I've always enjoyed following since Mitchell has come into the league. And now they have Michael Conley, it seems, at his best again. He's almost like a miniature, miniature Chris Paul where yeah. he is averaging the almost uh, 17 points, three and a half assists, and about, um, or excuse me, three and a half rebounds actually as a small guard, which is really good, and almost six assists because it's not like he's a very tall player. I think he's only about like six feet, six one. So to average almost four rebounds is very good. That's very Chris Paul-esque. So that's I'll say. What mini Chris Paul. And then Jordan Clarkson is having a heck of a season. The former Laker now finding his own out there in Utah, averaging 18.3, 3.9 rebounds and 2.1 assists. So they got a good grouping. Royce O'Neal is an elite defender. He's not going to give you much on offense, but he's an elite defender. Bogdanovich does well. Favors is a good veteran. They just got a good group, it seems. Put, to, put together a pretty good team uh, on the court, being able to have guys come in and off, uh, in and out of the bench, being able to contribute, um, having the whole team rotate around. That That's what helps to put, you know, a, a good record out there like that. I mean, they're averaging 116 points a game for an average. That's pretty good. I mean, you know, for, for an NBA team, um, especially with uh, everything that they're going through and the number of games that they're playing, I think that's a pretty good average as far as point-wise is concerned. Um, as far as the players are concerned, you, when you have a group of guys that are playing like the Utah Jazz and being able to put it together every single night, you know, they don't have the big name stars like LeBron James. And, you know, they, they just they, they don't have those Kawhi Leonard's and, and, and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So they're putting. Uh, they do uh, have Mitchell, though, who's emerging as a. Uh, but he is emerging, though. Yeah. OK. I, like you, a, you don't have household name guys there right now. Yeah. OK, you just don't. And and with, with the coach and the players, they're putting together a really good team up there. So uh, everything as far as what they're doing, they're, they're, they're on track at least to be um, in the discussion with uh, being considered for the, the, the finals. Yeah. Um, and also 13 and 13 for Rudy Gobert, 13 points, 13 rebounds. He's doing well. But I think eventually they are going to have a recognized star in Donovan Mitchell where he already averages almost 25 points a game. So, I mean, he's definitely uh, there in terms of being at star level already. It's yeah, yeah. It's a little bit for people to say you're a proven star, but I think for me, he's already there. And I think I usually don't like comparing someone to this person just because it makes me sad inside. Um, but... Rest in peace, Kobe. We love you. I think Mitchell could end up being the Kobe-esque type bucket oh, player okay. for yeah. the Jets. Yeah, because uh, Kobe was he, he was very determined. He was a very um, he, he was a yeah, the I quintessential Mitchell, power forward. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, all right. He was more of a shooting guard. He could just score down low too. Yeah. Kobe, okay. Yeah, because Kobe, Kobe just the the, the difference is Mitchell. Uh, might has like great straight line shooting where Kobe obviously had that distinctive fadeaway that was a signature of his. Um, I you don't see Mitchell do that as much, but when he does types of fadeaways, he tends to be fairly successful on them when needed. So okay. I just think he has the ability to always have that next level kick in when it's needed. That's why I would say it could lean towards someone like with that mentality that just kind of gets you to the next extra Got level. You. Got um, you. Now I got a question for you. I got a question for you now. What the, the Utah Jazz? They've won twenty five now so far, right? Okay. And, and 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 they're leading the West. And then you look at the who's leading the East, which is the Sixers, but followed very closely by the Nets. They both have twenty one uh, wins, right? Okay. So 
looking at the other teams, I mean, gosh, if you look at the Clippers and the Lakers and the Suns, they all have over 20 wins, mm-hmm. right? Do you think that these that these teams here, like the Lakers and the Clippers and the Suns, how are they stacking up against the Utah Jazz? Uh, well, the Suns are just becoming now into their own as a very competitive team. This is the first year they're really over a good threshold at the beginning. They obviously have Devin Booker, uh, Bridges, uh, that the Sixers traded over to them in the draft. Yeah. Um, so they have some decent players to build around there. DeAndre Aiden's a good center, but I don't think they're going to be a team that ever takes the, the um, conference this year. Okay. I don't think they're at that point yet. I think the Clippers are still a little bit behind the Lakers because Paul George is on minute restrictions still uh anthony davis has to figure out a way to just become more of a shooter which he's good at doing when he comes back because he's going to be limited he's not going to be able to do the jump cuts those all those things he's actually really good at and which makes him elite and one of the best players in the game top five in the game so uh he's probably going to be more performing at a top 10 to a top 15 yeah, but uh, still. on a limited capacity, which is still pretty yeah darn good, obviously. But you're, that then means at 36, you're going to need LeBron to again kick it up, and <laughs> it's not like he's getting younger. So you know, yeah. Oh, by that, the way, LeBron, we need you to get another 12 more points for the game today. Yeah, like that. I mean, and he'll do it. It's just the wear that then can create when he gets to the postseason where. You want to take the time with Davis. You don't want to rush him. Don't get me wrong. But you also want to make sure you don't over push. You might want to then be the team that goes for a J.J. Redick or somebody else that can help with the scoring because LeBron can facilitate, obviously, very well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you get him, that will help you compete. But without A.D., I think because of their offense of the Jazz, they're obviously not as good as the Lakers defensively. With Anthony Davis, the Lakers are the best great team both ways. So, um, but, so when's AD supposed to be coming back? If he does, I think if they w- don't want to rush it, I would say probably about a month, but I wouldn't rush it because LeBron will step up. You will stay in at least second to a very worst third, in my opinion, the Clippers might. But if the Clippers are up on you, it'd probably be like by a game or two at most. So right. once Davis comes back, you definitely have the ability to gain. So okay. Okay. I think they'll be fine there. I think they're going to be the think- team with yes. AD. Okay, but I was going to say not at his best healthiest level. Okay. I don't know if they're the team to beat then because the Jazz offense might be able to take advantage of a limited AD on defense as well. Okay. So now let's go about what the Clippers now because of with is Kawhi Leonard is he playing up to snuff? Is he even is he even is he showing up? I mean what what's going on there with the Clippers? They they got I mean they're they're right behind uh, uh they're right behind the Jazz. They've got twenty three wins. Uh, you know what I mean? Are are they a team that could be knocking on the door? Could they be threatening as well? I mean I know because of last year, uh, with all the additions that the Clippers made last year and all the additions that the Lakers did last year, they those two were the teams to beat in the West. Yep. You know what I mean? And then especially with what uh, Houston did with moving some things around uh, uh, with the Rockets and everything. And, and now now you're seeing the Clippers and the and the Lakers are rising back up to the top again. So do you think the Clippers are going to be uh, a threat to the Jazz as well? I think they could be because they got a little bit more experience. Obviously, Kawhi Leonard already has won a championship in Toronto. Of all yeah, yeah, yeah. That's he a brought the spot. championship to Toronto. Um, no offense. And then said, uh, Pirlo yeah, and thanks for the Canadian, memory. See ya. Yeah, no, no offense, Pirlo and the Canadian basketball fans, but nobody thought one man would go to Toronto so. and bring your city a championship. Um, but 27.1 points, 6.2 rebounds, 4.8 assists. He's doing his job. Yep. The thing that probably doesn't have them in first is what I mentioned before, the George Minute restrictions, because they are better than the Lakers without Davis. If the Lakers don't have Anthony Davis, I do think the Clippers are more – it would go until they prove to top over the Jazz. It would be the Jazz, Clippers, Lakers. But with Davis, I would put it more even. I would say both L.A. teams are kind of in even uh, position. But then the Lakers bring the more winning experience because LeBron's won a crap ton of championships. So at that point, they would bring more of the winning experience. Okay. But – 
I do think Paul George is playing fine. Obviously, he's averaging 24 himself. But uh, if you can get him into being Paul George minutes wise, yeah. that's what team yeah. is really going to have the best chance to compete with the Jazz. Ibaka's doing pretty good there. One of the Morrises, uh, Marcus, is doing pretty good there. Um, so I think they have a good group. And all of a sudden, Nicholas Batum, who was a player that kind of went into limbo for a while, is kind of re emerging and actually having a pretty successful season there. And then Patrick yeah. Beverly is a very scrappy player, obviously. So. They got some good guys to mix in. I still personally, until they prove me otherwise, like the way the the defensive makeup of the Jazz more than the Clippers, but we'll see as time goes on. Yeah, I got you. I got you. So we talked about the Western Conference, and we talked about some of the great talent and some of the wonderful things that's been going on in the Western Conference. Let's get into a little bit of the East here, where we got, of all teams that I would have never have thought to be leading the East would be the Philadelphia 76ers. I mean, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, we were expected to two be years ago, two years it. ago, Philadelphia was what at the bottom or close to the it bottom. Was a, a little bit more than that. Cause a few, that was when we started kind of getting better. And then we had good years. The last two years of Brett Brown. Mm-hmm. That's what I mean. Like the last two years, they've started to finally, like last year, they made a little bit of a sniff. And the year before was a little bit of more of a, you know, an improvement. Every year was more of an improvement. You know what I mean? This new coach uh, with uh, with the Sixers now, I think, uh, wow. Um, Doc Rivers. Yeah. yeah what uh, the only other teams that I see being there are the Nets and the Bucks. Um what do you think about the, the East? Give, give me a breakdown Nets, here of the East. The Nets are a scary team, but they're not nearly defensive savvy as the Sixers team has the ability to also still be because they haven't been as good defensively as I think they even should be at times. Where when you have Danny Green on your team, who's really a D and three guy at this point, not a three and D guy, he's more primarily better and more consistent defensively probably than he is at making the three-point shot you got a guy <laughs> like Thibel who's just a defensive uh player um who's kind of like your Royce O'Neal as guy but can score more than Royce yeah. because he's had he's had point games that he scored almost 20 or I think he might have had when he got 20 so like he will contribute at a higher clip when he really clicks in for a game than an O'Neal type but you got guys that can play defense. Ben Simmons is obviously good at defense. Uh, Joel's good at defense. Having Dwight as a backup center that also is tough down low and pretty old school, so that's why he gets called for some of those fouls yeah. that are soft. Yeah. But <laughs> uh, Tell us but, how you really feel about that, Joe. <laughs> but, uh, but the um, Nets are scary in the sense of their offense. Their defense is really piss poor where it's probably going to be ranked somewhere in the 20s and they're going to have to win because of their offense but their offense is that good that they could definitely have the ability to do such and if DeAndre Jordan plays like he has in a couple games this year and kind of becomes that very good defensive anchor that can grab boards uh, that's when they're going to become really scary but until we can do that on a more consistent basis and not just some games and then not so much others that's when I still think the Sixers can beat them in a series just based off of if Simmons can play consistent enough in the playoff uh, because he doesn't really have the playoff experience of others because he was injured last season. So if he can play consistent enough in the playoffs um, and then you can have him play good defensively as well, that's going to be the big keys to beating them. But we have a better defense, I think, than Brooklyn. They have the better offense, obviously. They have a historic offense since James Harden has got there. Yeah, I was oh, just going to so, say, yeah, because, yeah. boy, that they've just cranked off the last seven games in a row, you know, and that was the big deal there. That was the big trade or the big um, James Harden going to the Nets from the Houston Rockets, you know what I mean? And that instantly put Brooklyn, <laughs> that instantly put the Nets kind of right on up there, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, but that's what I said. They put the offense in a historic um Mount on Mount Everest, but it did not put their defense anywhere close to that. So uh, it's um, it's not really a team that is going to win in the conventional ways. If they win a championship, it's going to be because they go 
and keep coming at you and are aggressive. Exactly. Whereas the Bucks, I don't think are going to win the finals just because they don't have his consistency when it comes to their around the team scoring when it doesn't come to Chris Middleton and Giannis. Uh, everyone else is not. They don't have as many consistent people on their teams and as many consistent people on the other end where they have aging um, Lopez, I believe, is their center yeah. the box. So uh, you got some guys that are not as consistent there. So I feel like they're still a team that's kind of a very good third place team. Uh, maybe they could overtake second if they do hone in the defensive end more because – but I don't think they're taking over from the net. So I feel right. like they're just going to be that great third place team. You know, what I've been looking at here, too, is this. All of those three teams, the Nets, the Bucks, and 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 the uh, Sixers are all really good at home. And they all have kind of not the best records on the road. You know what I mean? So I think that's going to be something that's going to play into things, especially down the road. And especially once you get into the playoffs. You know what I mean? Because you need to be able to win those road games in the playoffs. You know what I mean? And so um, yeah, when, exactly. when you're eight and nine on the road, that's uh, you, you need to be a little better on the road, I would think, <laughs> uh, you know, so uh, I think that's going to yeah. play. It will play. It's just when you win, if you can win the East, you get the advantage. So then obviously not... you get that extra game at home. Yeah. Right. Do they so still won't play as much now? Are they going to um, I know that with what the NHL did last year because of COVID and everything like that. And, and I know that the NBA was um, not nearly as affected the way that the NHL or they didn't change as much. So, but they haven't changed, right? The NBA is still going to have their um, playoff format. They so wild card. No, they have wild card teams this year. Okay. So, so the, the, the wild card team could potentially make it. So that's what the seventh or eighth seed. I think that's how they're doing it. Yeah, I don't. Think okay. They're, maybe they're maybe it's to nine or something. I felt like they made have made an additional team, but I, I don't really entirely remember what it is. Andrew's the one that always remembers. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, no, I was just curious though to see if they were going to change anything about the playoffs. Um, and their first round is only the best of five, right? They don't play um, the best of seven until you get to the semifinals and the finals, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the case. Yeah, like baseball. Baseball's first round. Same way, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. First round, they only played the best of five. Okay. All right. So we talked about the East. We talked about the West. What, what do you think, man? Is it going to be a Sixers-Jazz final? Or do you think LA's going to squeak in? Or what, what, what do you think? Um, I mean, I feel like if the Lakers can get Anthony Davis to figure out how to play in a limited capacity and are still a very good way, which he, we know he's a guy that always puts his best foot forward. So he's probably, right, but he's out for the next month though. Yeah. I think they are still the team to be at their best. Um, after that, I would put jazz then Clippers when it comes to the East. Um, I think Ben Simmons needs to get more consistent and the Sixers need one more um, guy, maybe bringing back a Redick or somebody like that, um, that is a little bit more consistent where Cork Mons has been better this year, but still up and down a little bit. So getting more consistent shooters, Isaiah Joe's a rookie, so you can bring in someone with more experience like Redick, who's only going to help those guys like he did when he was here before for Cork Mons and now can do for Isaiah Joe. So yeah, I think that could work. If you're the Nets, you don't need to do a damn thing other than maybe add to your defense. That's something you might want to do. You might want to trade for a defensive-esque player. But yeah. other than that, you don't really need to do anything. And when's and the trade deadline? Top teams. Uh, I think the uh, East. Um, that's a good question. I want to say next month. Okay. But it might be April. Okay. Uh, the trade, the trade deadline. Okay. But um, so I'm there's time say, yet. There's time yet for teams to make some moves and do some things that they can get, you know, to where they need to get to if they if they can. You it's know more. I mean? It is next month. It's March 25th. Okay. Cool. Cool. That's what it said. But um, I was going to say I think the West has three competitive teams for the championship, which is the Jazz, Lakers, and Clippers. The oh, I agree. I yeah, think I agree. East only has two because I don't think the Bucks are a championship contender. I agree. I, I agree with you. That's in the Sixers. 
I have to agree with you on that. Uh, I, I just look at Philadelphia as kind of being that taking over for the East because now obviously Cleveland's fallen away and, you know, Toronto's doesn't have Kawhi Leonard anymore now, you know what I mean? And so um, I and, and the Sixers have done nothing but get – first round draft picks the last couple of years and have made good on some of those draft picks and they've built the team pretty well and they're actually starting to pay dividends now where the Sixers are actually starting to win some games and and playing a little bit more consistently than what they have in the last couple of years you know what I mean that's why I was like completely blown away when I looked at it I was like wait a minute that's the Sixers leading the east wait no 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 that's a typo but but it's not and so there you go man more power to the Sixers yeah, no, they're doing good. We uh, have a couple decent things. Uh, <clears throat> not the Eagles. Um, going on <laughs> to Philadelphia. Um, so, uh, but, you know, other than them, uh, there's some yeah, nice things, yeah. including our some soccer teams. Uh, yeah. Our soccer team's one of the better ones in the MOS. Maybe and, uh, and we'll talk something team, about right, that. The the, wings. Um, they, yeah, the Wings. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I remember watching some of their brawls back in the day. <laughs> there you go. Um, but the uh, the uh, they had some old school brawls that they look like the Broad Street Bully Flyers fighting on a Philadelphia oh wing. Oh my! Well, hey, you know. But what? um, that's a perfect transition, ahead. Joe. What do you think? <laughs> to go into the Flyers or to go into hockey? Yeah, yeah, because I mean, the both teams on Broad uh, in the Wells Fargo Center are having a pretty successful season, especially because. Uh, the Flyers had to go through uh, a lot of perseverance and everything with their lineup. Um, as I said on uh, our podcast yesterday with Jim and the podcast that night I did for Disciples of Ed, um, it's a time that you have to just get through the adversity. And they got yep. one point out of the Rangers. I didn't expect a win at Tahoe, quite frankly. Yeah, I didn't either. And uh, I just wanted to take in the experience now, waiting nine hours, to watch the first game wasn't a marvelous experience, but the scenes and everything and watching a Rutledge fall on his rear end while trying to imitate the uh, happy <laughs> Gilmore shot was hilarious. Um, so there was some nice experience to that, having the nice backdrop and all that. It was beautiful, but yeah, I mean, it, it was what it was. It was all for TV. Um, and obviously that didn't work out as well with day one because the game had to resume at 12 Eastern. But, you know, right. um, uh, diehards uh, probably did pick it up and watch it. And so, um, but uh, it, it was a good game. And then our game wasn't a good game for us, but it was still a great experience. You know, here's the thing that here's the thing that blew me away a little bit. And we we did our preview show, the, the Lake Tahoe preview show. And and yep. and Shannon Walsh said it. Uh, from Slapshot Sweethearts, that um, this was a missed opportunity for the NHL to be uh, promoting this, to be you know doing something special for this, and they just absolutely did not do that. And then I think with what happened on the the first day, how okay, riddle <laughs> me this: How is it that you put an ice rink in the middle of a fairway? next to a lake that's not frozen and expect it to maintain temperature when there is no cloud cover, right? And it's a completely sunny day. What happens? The sun reflects off the water from the lake and radiates back in through. Hey, see, they weren't thinking that far ahead. <laughs> well, I mean, they also, I mean, they had weather people that chipped it. I think it was more the NHL decided what we want to do the ceremony and have the opening ceremony. We don't want that to be at midnight Eastern. Okay. So okay, we wanted to it. do that. So whatever happens with the first period happens, we'll reassess after that. Yeah. I think that's honestly what the thing was. <laughs> that's definitely what they did. But, but you look, I, uh, I know why they tried to do it at that time because of exactly with what you said, the views, the picturesque views, the, 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 what happened? Oh, I don't know. You went away and came back. <coughs> okay. Well, <laughs> put your back. <laughs> so you're back. All right. Welcome back. Uh, uh, but the views at, at, uh, at Lake Tahoe are amazing. I mean, when you look yes. at the camera from ice level and look out across the lake, I mean, that's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. 
right? But you can't sit there and tell me that somebody said, hey, let's put the game on at 12 o'clock. High noon. What? <laughs> okay, it's it's the, the most sunlight out there and you get the most exposure to the, you know, the, the best lighting for the cameras and all that. And you get all those great panoramic views and all that. But, but, but hey, you got to have ice. And ice requires a lower temperature and you can't have sun beating down on it. Yeah, no, uh, it did not work out as they hoped. We started late afternoon, so you still got to see some of the scenery local time. And um, I think that worked out well. I think they should have moved the other one, obviously, to about like 4.30 or the local time. Or, a little, or something, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, it was a missed opportunity. But still, it was nice to see the experience. And again, it was nice to see a very, very big failure at attempting to do a Happy Gilmore shot. Um, I'm with so, you on that because I laughed my butt um, off when I saw him fall like that. So <laughs> Yeah. Um, but, but you know what, though? The Here's the other cool thing. Was Here's the other was. cool thing. Uh, the game was the most watched, the Flyers and the Boston game, was the most watched NBC sporting event um, for a very long time. They had, yeah, they had one of the largest shares ever uh, for an NBC sporting event for that, for that game, for the Flyers and the Boston game. And they could have done that. That's why I wanted to say that, because they could have done that if they would have just taken your advice and started that first game a little later. Yeah, that's true. No, that's a good point. Yeah, because you're going to lose attendance when it's 12 Eastern, obviously, a TV attendance, because you don't have anybody in the um, stands out there on a fairway. But, yeah, I mean, it, it, was, it, it was what it was. Uh-huh. Did you see that one so. puck that went flying? Right? I think it was in the, uh, I think it was in the uh, Avalanche game. And they, they said, yeah, the puck went uh, out, of the, out of the rink, right? And it landed, like, <laughs> way down the fairway there. I was like, okay. <laughs> because <laughs> there's no net yeah. yeah there was no netting around the glass so if there's a puck goes flying it's just gonna go flying there's nothing there to catch it you know what i mean <laughs> yeah that's why i said if you can plan a golf trip right after that you might get some uh free pucks from the nhl i was just gonna say all i have to do is wait a couple days and you'll be seeing some pucks laying around out there on the 18th fairway <laughs> all well, right well, speaking of all kinds of fun things we i think I think we have to mention this, um, speaking of fairways. Uh, prayers go out to uh, Tiger Woods. Um, uh, he yep. was involved in a uh, single um, car accident where his car uh, flipped around. And he. And uh, they were talking about this, too, which was pivotal in this. The California streets there are very narrow. He's going to play, and I think it was a charity event with some celebrity. Yep. And he had a rental car and they brought up the stats and they said the collision rate in rental cars is significantly higher, especially in areas as such. Well, they, like, that's, because you're not used to the handling and all that. And, and if that you're going road, a little bit quicker because you're running late or whatever it was, right. that could a factor into that. And well. they said that that road that he wrecked on is notorious at that curve where he wrecked is notorious for collecting people that, you know, are unwary or whatever the case is and stuff not like aware that. of the surround yeah because you're exactly. not in that area all the time all the time right you don't drive that road every single day so but um we'll see we're, we're hoping that everything goes well i mean he just came back from back surgery he he, he was playing starting to play um pretty well he did win the masters last masters. year <laughs> yeah he won the masters last year so i mean you know he was coming back to playing well recovering from back surgery but uh from what i understand he had two compound fractures and a shattered ankle uh they did do some surgery so it's going to probably he be a long awesome, time though, which was good yeah they like said he was awake said, yeah, yeah they like said others have awake. said the most important thing to keep is your mind and when you have that you have everything so um, that's what he was responsive. He said to call his manager per some reports and got them in contact with all the right people before he ended up going into all these uh, surgeries. Yeah, so yeah. that was prayers, good to hear. So. Yeah, prayers out to Tiger Woods and his camp, and we're hoping that everything goes well because, you know, it's a shame when you see somebody um, have a car accident like that and, you know, uh, they were they were trying to come back and 
Yeah. So I just wanted to mention that, you know, um, uh, the fact that we were talking about fairways and everything. And I just wanted to a little shout out. I'm, I'm not a huge uh, golf person or anything like that. But, you know, when, when somebody like that, Tiger Woods, who's an ambassador of the sport, um, go, goes down with a, a major issue like that, I think you have to kind of give props, especially to the law enforcement and the EMS and all the folks that came there to his rescue. They had to extract him from the car. Uh, okay, so you have to give it up to the fire and rescue crews and all those folks yep. too. So um, we're we're hoping for the best for you, Tiger. Um, get well, buddy. Yeah, so I echo that. Obviously, uh, you gotta wish the best for uh, Tiger. But um, in terms of the Flyers, I was honestly uh, um, content with it because we got one point out of the Rangers. We had fight for hard and far for, and we also faced the best shootout guy in the NHL currently in that game. He did not step away before that game right. in Artemi Panarin, where for yeah. this next game, he will not be playing. Not be there, so. yeah. And yeah. also, first of all, um, that seems like a fabricated story. I won't get into it, but we wish him well as well, because if exactly. you have a Russian hit put on you, you definitely want to go hiding somewhere. You do not want to be playing in hockey. <laughs> so, yeah, that's probably not um, a good idea to be uh, quite as – uh, publicly available like that. <laughs> no, no, definitely no, 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 no. no, no. We're, look, so, all uh, we can say I is this: him well and hope yeah, he's safe. Yeah. And they we're we're hoping that the truth comes out, and once the truth comes out, then then we'll know. Um, and you know, uh, all we can do is wish for the best, and and hope that everything turns out well. Uh, we know how certain um, political things happen and stuff like that, and we're we're not here to talk about that. Uh, we're just here to wish a hockey player who's facing some adversity. We just wish him the best, okay, and yeah. hope and hope for the best and hope for the best. But yeah. you know that that parlays into exactly with what you were talking about. Um, we'll, we'll get in a little bit of the Flyers here because they're playing tonight um, for the first time in a while since the uh, since the uh, Lake Tahoe massacre. Um, uh, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, they're they're playing tonight against the Rangers um, because and and they're going to be missing uh, Panarin uh, for tonight's game uh, because of this whole um, issue with him uh, dealing with the with his uh, home country uh, and things of that nature. But there's also a lot of adversity as well too because of the Flyers with what they've had to face in the last um, two weeks or here since the last game couple games that they played with dealing with uh, a lot of players on the COVID list. Yeah. Yeah, there's adversity, obviously, for both teams. The Rangers are a team that's obviously still not fully there yet either. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they have beat us, and then they beat the Capitals to get their last two wins. So they beat some successful teams. Yeah. And the Capitals' win was without uh, Panarin, if I'm not mistaken. So yes. they were able to play them really well without Panarin, where obviously Panarin was a huge pivotal point of the shootout in uh, beating us. And then Capo Caco is also one of the league's best shootout players. I was just going to say, yeah, and he's, he's another one of the best ones. So, yeah. 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 So you're not going to be able to have much success as a goaltender against those two. Not, not That's for certain. Um, the Flyers, I – haven't seen a full thing yet on it, but G practiced yesterday. So did Braun, as Jim Jackson mentioned in our thing. Yeah, he I did see some post though from Jamie, from Jamie Bascal from Flyers Nitty Gritty that it does appear that Drew will be in the lineup for tonight's game. According to some of the okay. tweet reports that he's put out, it does appear that. Oh Paul yeah, Drew here it is. Expected. He tweeted two hours ago. Expected flyers lines and pairings for tonight. Yeah. JVR Coots Faraby, Giroux Hayes Patrick Bunny playing third line center with Raffle and Nack, Andreoff playing fourth line center with uh, Morin and Trewinski. Okay. And caution Trewinski, who's getting put in the lineup. Uh, Provi. Ghost, Sanheim, Myers, Hag, Gus. So we're taking out Shushko and Caution Trewinski's getting his season debut. Okay. According to expected pairing. Yeah, um, I didn't hear uh, a name in there that I was... Oh, Moose. And Moose, apparently, is the... Expected. Starting? Starter? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, Braun is still out on the list. Yeah, Braun's still out on the COVID list, I think. Or no, he was added to the active roster, but I think he's, he's not added, available yet. But they might just not want to put him in yet. Okay, and then there was somebody else that I didn't hear on the forward list. Nolan Patrick. No, Patrick 
Patrick where, where? was uh, the winger on the second line. It was Drew Hayes Patrick. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. And then one of them. That's that's only because we're still missing that's Lawton. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. All right. So that's why, because I agree with that's what Jim was saying. Though. Yeah, I know. I know. That's his expected lines, but uh, it would have Carson Trewinsky. So they want to bring a little bit, which I think makes sense against a rival like the Rangers. Bring more. I agree. Uh, and I, I, I think I, Carson has a more physical then, game. Yeah, uh, this I feel like should still be. I know Jamie Tweed is one of Morin's last games on wing. I think he would do best off going back to defense, but uh, that's I'll just second my- that. Um, okay, well, that's both of our opinions then. Um, where Friedman, I don't think, should have been put on waivers, uh, but it, it is what it is. Uh, it happens, so hopefully he clears it to get back to the taxi nope, squad. No, he's gone. Oh, did Pittsburgh. Hextall grab him? Hextall grabbed him, picked him up. Penguins picked up, uh, picked him up uh, today, so he is now a Pittsburgh Penguin. All right, well, uh, we hate you, Ron. I'm kidding. Though, so. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. What I, 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 uh, I don't understand why that was no, done. Reeves is a good defense. Like he, the, the thing is, he's not a, so to speak, like very good, like how some people, scouts, would even use the word sexy-looking defenseman that, like, does everything right. in a way that would wow you. He's right. a guy that just gets it done. But you need guys like that on your team. And Pittsburgh knows they need, for darn sure, guys like that on their team because they got a lot of guys that are not, are not always techn- technically sound. And their um, defense is Olivier seriously Joseph suspect. Olivier is very good. Uh, the, both of the Joseph twins are having good seasons, one in Tampa for Matthew and then uh, Pierre and uh, – Pittsburgh, but yeah. they don't have the best overall defense. Right. So that's why uh, getting someone that's just kind of a keep it simple, stupid type guy that played good at forward the first time you put him there since nine years old has the work, very good work ethic. Unless if you're thinking someone else or like you're going to give Prosser who played good in one game more time, which would make sense because yeah, you play yeah. good in one game and some other guys are playing not very consistent and he at least – play good in one game and did something he's not even paid to do, which is score, where I feel like you could put him back in. The only other guys that have experience, like I said, on DOE is Watherspoon, Bygris, and Pouillot, if I remember correctly, from in terms of NHL-level experience, um, where the then other guys, the Flyers, or some of those guys, the Flyers would actually, I think, have to sign where Pouillot was already on the taxi squad and could get put in a game if needed. So you might be able to maneuver that because it still doesn't seem like AV's committed to a third pairing, where a third pairing doesn't make or break you, but it's still important, and you have to not have one of the worst rated third pairing. I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. I, I Some of the things that have happened in the last little while here, I just don't understand. Um, like, like what we were talking about with the uh, uh, the pre the, the the quarter season preview with Jim Jackson, I have a hard time with why why they keep going back to these same guys that are not producing. Why do they keep putting these guys back in the lineup if they're not producing? Look, I understand that maybe not the young guys are necessarily all that ready yet. But if they're better than the guy that they're putting out on the ice, I have a hard time with them not seeing some time. You know what I mean? That's just my opinion. You know, I, I get it. They're, they're trying to win games. They're trying to get to the playoffs. They're trying to do this. But I fail to see why we continually put guys in that are costing the team instead of helping the team. And then you're you're putting guys you're 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 sending guys away that could help the team instead of, you know what I mean? Why are you sending them guys away? You, those guys should be in the team playing. Yeah, I feel like honestly that has to have something to do with. Obviously, they're just rumors, but the talk of the Flyers looking at a different few named defensemen. Obviously, the most prominent one being Matthias Ekholm, who's with the Nashville Predators. Coach. Yeah. And I feel like this might set bigger alarm bells, too. They're probably going to trade for a defenseman. Because I think they knew Friedman had a good chance to be claimed, especially when your former general manager is currently a general manager again. Uh, So I think they had to know that that was possible. So I think... But that's a heck of a risk. The big thing here is... You're going to make a trade for whatever defenseman you're able to um, snag. Um, 
I feel like you obviously have to snag somebody that's more defensive centric. Um, where unless if they're like Eric Carlson as like like if you get Duncan yeah. Hamilton, he's made better defense on Carolina. If he can play like he did there, he's going to be basically one of the best offensive defensemen right. in hockey. So that's so, a little bit different. But, so does Nashville? Could Nashville potentially take Gustafson off of our hands, or Braun, or somebody like that? I don't think. I mean, I don't know why they would except for the fact that Gus only has a one-year contract and the fact of what Jim was saying where Eddie Olchek thinks he's better than what he's putting out. So if they can figure him out down there, they do need a little bit more offense out of their back end as well. That's then what I mean. Maybe they would take him, but he's not good. He would be a throw-in. He's not going to be anything that helps you. They're not going to consider him much value, I don't think. So it would probably be like okay. a okay. first I, round. I was just day. curious. Yeah, I was just curious. Like, I think Ekholm's a guy, if you trade for him, He's a guy you're going to have to, like J.J. was saying, either um, re-sign or to take that a step further. If you think you're going to win the Cup, you better do it. But if you do it, no one's going to care that he had that he walked, even if you trade a first, I don't think, because you won the freaking Cup. So um, Yeah, I'm with that, you on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, But that's a big risk because you have to actually – capitalize and finish the season out and win. Otherwise, if he does walk, uh, people are not going to be uh, overly uh, happy with that, obviously. No, and, you know, speaking of walking, look, uh, we, 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 we spent a lot of time here talking about the Flyers, and, you know, we, we do love the Flyers very much, but there's a lot of things going on on the NHL right now. Um, we did touch a little bit on what was going oh, on. Oh, wait, no, he know. does have, I actually realized, he has 3.75 for next year, so you would have him for next year, too. I just looked that up. So, at home, you would have to worry about after next season. But it's only at 3.75? Um, that's what it says, 3.75 on cap friendly. Right now, he got banged up in the one game, though. Yeah, like, I know. I saw that. But what this, to me, is a no-brainer move, especially when you lose Friedman like that to get to nothing. First, uh, you definitely have to give up a first, though, for knowing now that he has that extra year for that good of a contract. Okay. But I would do it because the the other yeah. thing is the Flyers draft well, where I think what um, some people I see on Twitter and everything, when they're like, don't trade a first for a defenseman, they don't realize how good we pick later in the draft because Shushko was later in the draft that they already have played. In Wisdom was later in the draft. Quality. Yeah, Wisdom's playing like a first-round pick. That was a fourth-round pick. He was pick. a fourth-round pick. Um, Zamua was undrafted. Wyatt Wiley's yeah. playing. Yeah. Later, Hogberg was later. Uh, Hag is a solid NHL defenseman. He was later. Um, so you have guys that were later in the draft. Um, you have Myers, who was undrafted. You got Jamula, you're developing, who was undrafted. Uh, the team scouts well all around. You brought Raffle from overseas, played well. Linus Sandine looks good in the minors. You brought from overseas, Rasmus's brother. So they're doing a good job all around. Uh, obviously, you got Fedotov overseas in net, and you got Urson. So you're doing good all around. I think this team proven they don't necessarily need a first. It's great to have it, but you're still pick well. Otherwise, you might get a guy that turns into first value later. Yeah, see, that's the thing right there. Like what Pittsburgh Steelers did two years ago when they traded for Minka Fitzpatrick. Right. So they traded their 2021 first round draft pick for Minka Fitzpatrick. Minka Fitzpatrick was 11th overall selected in the first round. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, he ended up being a Pro Another Bowl goal. player. You know, he ended up leading the league in takeaways. He ended up, you know what I mean? Like, like, all right. We know he's a first round commodity because he's he was 11th overall selected. Right, he came over to Pittsburgh and then just lit it up. All right, I'll take. I don't have a problem trading away a first round draft pick for somebody that is a known commodity as a first round draft pick. Exactly, I fully agree with that. Yeah, so if we have a chance to get this guy from Nashville, I think we need to take it. I definitely think we need to well, take it. He's also a defenseman that can play your second line, your first line. Like, he could do whatever you want there. So he's going to be your top four, which then moves somebody else down that actually can play, 
a little bit more consistently. So it adds a lot more consistency I agree. in there. I agree. Um, and you, but you would pro- unless if you obviously give them a defenseman back, depending who that is, but it would probably be more of a throw in where the pick is really where more of the value is coming in, where a defenseman would be probably Hag or Gus or something, somebody along those lines. But I think you would have to give a prospect too. I don't think they're just going to take your first because that Colm is one of the least consistent, most consistent defensemen. Well, but he only is 3.75 million value to the team for the next two years. So, so. Maybe well, that's not. also why I think they might give you, take more because that contract's such a team friendly contract. So they'll be okay. Now I don't know if they're going to ask you for someone that's ridiculous, but like if you give them, like they might say, well, what about that Ohio State kid you drafted in later rounds? You like Lazinski? Nope. Like they might say something along oh, those. Oh, oh, him? Yeah, maybe. Cam York? Uh, no. They might say, well, what about a guy like – now, you don't want to trade O'Brien for him, but you could trade LeBurge, who's still coming off. Yeah, there you go. Looks like a pretty good player. Yeah. In my opinion, once he figures it out and stays healthy, I think he'll be able to figure it out. But you don't need a million forwards that you like. So um, you could sacrifice that, but I exactly think he would be a solid player, but that might be someone in there. I think the first is what they're getting the most value from. Probably. Or – you know, we could probably even um, do a uh, uh, a a goalie even too. I mean, I don't know what their goalie prospects look like, but so Joe has gone away again, um, and now he's back. And Joe keeps flipping off and flipping back on. Yeah, man, we like it. What happened is not doing a remaster. Yeah, I know. That's okay. It's all good. No big deal. But uh, we no, we keep uh, seeing yeah, every think... once in a while we get to see your your little picture. And then, and then your face comes back, and then your little picture comes, and then your face comes back. Well, you know, so, we're just doing the disco type, uh, throwing it back. Yeah, there you go. All right. Cool beans. Um, uh, I can put the light on in the background, too. That flickers different colors. Oh, then... hey, no, no, no. <laughs> we don't want to break it out like that now. Uh, I think I, – look, though, but I think the Flyers need to, with what we talked about, get some time to get some games under their belt and try to get back to a little bit of consistency again because they've missed so much time and stuff like that. Then we can have a much better assessment of things after they play the next couple of games and we start get to start getting some of these guys back. But I am going to say this. I do agree with Lance, uh, uh, Lance Green that we've talked about on numerous occasions. We do need to get that physicality up in the game and in the team. And until that happens... Our, our, help with that. Yeah, our... Our star players are going to get pushed around, and and things are not going to be answered, and and I have a problem with that. So, the other big story I think we have to get into. Obviously, the Flyers aren't the biggest story, but for us they are. <laughs> but the biggest story in the NHL was the fact that we had a certain coach is no longer coaching anymore, and I was quite quite blown away by the fact that the Montreal Canadiens fired Claude Julian. Yeah. What? I mean, it seems like they want to go with a more, like we were talking about um, the other day with Pirlo, a more defensive mindset. And Julian has been known to do that and run into the offense. But it seems like this team, from what I read, and Hockey News will probably end up complimenting, commenting on the video since he's a big Canadian guy. So let me know if you think otherwise. But wants to go too old school, where... I'm not sure if that's going to work in today's NHL. We saw it with Dallas before they brought in bonus. Their defense, they were too defensive. Yeah. Is such a thing. Even with good things, defense wins championships. It's like, it's like this right here. Water. You can't just drink 85 gallons of water. You're still die. There's a, there's a limit to everything that's good. <laughs> so, um, Can't argue with that logic. There's a limit to, just to make the point that obvious, there's a limit to how much defense you should actually play. You can't go like, oh, we scored two goals. Let's just, like, that's literally what the Stars would do for a period of time. So, but, and, and Montreal, the difference is Dallas did that because they had bigger guys that were getting banged up a bit so they couldn't move as quick. Exactly. Montreal doesn't. Montreal has Kakaniemi, who's a bigger guy, but that can move pretty well. Suzuki, who's very skilled to know, who's one of the most underrated players in hockey. Yep. Um, Druan, who, when he's healthy, can move a little bit. And then they have Romanov, who's playing fantastic. So you got a good team. you got, obviously, Carey Price, who's going to the Hall of Fame. So you have a team that shouldn't have to rely just on, let's 
protect the lead when we only have a two goal lead. That's why I've and and let's try to get all brute with the Shea Webers of the world and let's make Petrie more physical, who's also right now probably one of the top two in the Norris if the season ended with uh, how good Jeff Petrie's playing, another very underrated player. You should still make your defense push your offense. That's what I think Montreal needs to do. They have to have a team that facilitates their offense through their defense, and they got Shea Weber, they got Jeff Petrie, they got Romano, yeah, Romanoff. But, I mean, okay. and they, they got a guy that can do – they got three guys that are good at doing that. So they should be able – to do that. And Me- oh, Victor Mete, I, I like him. He's underrated, too. Yeah. So they got to run their offense through their defense more consistently. But other than that, they should not go overly brute and defensive. That's too old school of a mentality. OK, but correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't Claude Julian the coach of the New Jersey Devils during the the uh, the infamous uh, uh, trap? He uh, was. Yeah, he okay. was. That's why. That's why this doesn't make the most. That's why. That's I, where I'm I think scratching my bean to what on this. Pierre LeBron said, which um, is, it seemed like he enjoyed. Um, it seemed like they enjoyed the organization. That is the effort the guys were given, but it was not in the right way. Like they seemed like players were confused in exactly what they wanted to do, and before the. It went down the well a little bit longer. Um, paraphrasing, they uh, wanted yeah, to yeah. kind of nip it in the butt. Yeah, because they've uh, lost the last couple of games here after coming out of the gates looking really awesome. So they've lost the last couple of games, especially like to Ottawa. You can't you can't be consistently losing to Ottawa and expect to 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 think everything's still good. You know? No, no, so, yeah. So uh, I was completely shocked by that. I was uh, shocked. But at the end, once I kind of sat back and read stuff and everything, yeah, it makes I wasn't sense. As surprised, yeah, like it kind of made some more sense because if you are still doing solid and putting forth an effort, but it seems like guys are kind of confused on the message, that is still an issue. Yeah. Like it doesn't really me- like it doesn't. It's yeah. kind of like if if um you're a manager and there's a guy above you. And everyone's doing great, but you're still like, I don't know what in God's creation this guy's telling me to do above me, but I'm still running everyone well because I'm saying do your thing. Like, you're going to want to eventually know what he wants. Like, you're not going to be able to just consistently go, okay, let's just keep running this ship until we run into the ground by accident because we have no idea what he wants. <laughs> um, so, like, well, Okay, so that's why they got rid of Julian then. Okay, that makes more sense now that you think about it like that. But still. I mean, it's it just seems like he was the the perfect guy, the perfect coach to to coach that particular style and that type of 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 team, and that just doesn't make any sense to me why they would let him go like that. But uh, we're not up there. We're not dealing with the situation. It's not our issue. Um, I we yeah, did touch on the. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There, there you go. All right. Um, look, we also got a shout out here to 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 Boston. I think the hottest team in hockey. I mean, they uh, next to Toronto. Yeah. You, you got to give it up to Toronto and Boston for being some of the hottest teams in hockey. You know, and and at the quarter mark, um, you could definitely see that Boston is starting to. Um, stack more and more wins together and they're starting to separate, you know, like you're starting to yeah. see the good teams starting well, to got separate. They solid goalies too, which is, I would say, their goaltending room in terms of going three deep. And I like Lyon as a guy that can fill in, but Vladar is a guy that seems like he could be a 1B, at least, at where least. they really do like him. So... I think their room is better than ours in terms of who's the three. Because Sandstrom, you don't want to play in the NHL. He should be going down and playing some with McIntyre. But the problem is Zane McIntyre is one of the best AHL goaltenders. So right. don't really want to sit him. Um, yeah, but probably. the um, thing there is I like Lyon, but I think Vladar is a notch better. So you, And a guy that could become an NHL starter, Lyon's going to be a backup if he ever does late in his 20s, which guys have done in the past break yeah. into the league just because they're great at keeping working at it and everything I think would do that. Um, but I think they have the better room there. And I like Tuka Rask in terms of once he gets in the postseason, uh, when you have a guy like Halak with him, that can kind of count <sighs> how many games he has in the Ooh, season. Oh, man. Interesting with them. Uh, you're going to be able to go a long way. And I think they're a team for me 
uh, this will make John uh, happy and warm and fuzzy inside. Um, that still will be Toronto because they don't. I agree. Defense. Toronto, I agree. Boston with inexperienced defense still runs a strategy with Cassidy that they try to play defense. I Where agree. with Green, it's still a lot more, uh, or Sheldon Keefe, excuse me, it's still a lot more uh, running, running gun. gun. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's going to come to nip them in the butt if they end up playing a team like the Boston Bruins. Even if, is... unless if Freddie Anderson plays like he's playing this season. Yeah. But, that, but he's going to have to do that in the postseason, which is a different animal. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, we've all, and, and another couple of teams that we've been, that I think we've all been impressed with has been Florida. Uh, we didn't really have very good things, very, very many nice things and good things to say about Florida at the beginning of the season. I mean, we all said, well, hey, if if Bob plays up to his 80% of his Vezna self, and if Drieger Bobby can actually. Anymore. But that's what I mean. Because <laughs> if Drieger's come in and just said, what, Bob who? Right, and has played really, really well. Florida has played really, really well, not just offensively, but defensively. Okay, they're not yep. playing against the the cream of the league yet. I mean, they're playing the Detroits and, you know, that kind of thing. But they, they're they winning games. They're playing against Tampa Bay, and they're beating Tampa Bay. Okay, yeah. so yeah, that's where – already has beat Carolina and Tampa Bay. Exactly. Uh, also beat Nashville, uh, who's an okay team. And then they fought to OT in their most recent, one of the more recent games on the 28th against the uh, Blue Jackets. So right. um, he's been playing really well. Uh, Bob is not still, but I mean, that's a thing. That's what makes them scary. Then you got Levy and Knight, who were both uh, very good in the World Juniors. Levy just decided he finally got an invite to summer camp and was like, yeah, see, you two, you ain't starting anymore. Um, and then became the starting goaltender for Canada. So, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, so they got two good guys uh, oh, boy. there. Um, so I think uh, – they're going to be fine when it comes to goaltending. Dreger's going to be this nice uh, middle 20s blossoming goaltender scene, and hopefully Bob can figure it out. Otherwise, he is going to be a hurtful buyout to have to make for your books. Yep. Uh, but he might end up going to the KHL, like I know Peyton and John were talking about, so we'll see what happens there. That but uh, we wish him the best and hope he figures it out. Yeah, that would not surprise me one little bit if if he ended up going to uh, – if he ended up going to the um, – to the to the uh, uh, the Russian league because look ten million dollars a year that's a lot of money and if you're riding yeah. the bench for any serious length of time which he has been now you know what I mean that that's a serious amount of money that you could be using to pay for other things on your team that you need okay now I understand why they brought him in they had to bring him in because they have nobody else down there I mean they had Huffman but that's about it they don't and and, and Florida is not the big market. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, they wanted to bring in a guy that would draw more people. Yeah. Put butts in the seats. Okay, and let's face it. Bob Broski is that guy. Uh, he's won two Vesna trophies. I mean, come on. Uh, normally in yeah, a non... he just hasn't been that guy since. Right. <laughs> normally in a non-COVID-affected seasons, that $10 million is nothing. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely better when this cap's still going up and getting higher and going up incrementally after each season. Exactly. So we were, we were impressed with Florida. I think the other team that we're a little bit impressed with too is a little bit of New Jersey coming out. I'm a little bit impressed with what New Jersey has been able to do, um, especially with some of their <laughs> first round draft picks that they've had the last two years. Holy moly. Okay. Um, so we like, yeah, they are 500. They've been solid. They would obviously probably be better if Blackwood never went down, but yeah. um, they're an all right team. They're still going to be on the outside looking in when it's all said and done with the Rangers. Agreed. I think, um, you think but, so? You yeah, think the Rangers are that little bit spit better? Yeah. Yeah. They're a solid team, but they're still going to be uh, outside. I think the Rangers have guys that are more experienced already, so they might be a notch better than the Islanders are coming into their own now. So they're actually playing more like the New York Islanders of Lisa yeah than at the yeah because that that was that was the other team that I was surprised about this year as well too because I picked the Islanders to 
uh, go to win the, the whole East. And well, well, they don't even remotely yeah. look like they're going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, uh, well, uh, they're coming up a little bit. Yeah, now. they are. They are. People fall off, but yeah, yeah they we'll are. See what happens there. But I mean, you can't yeah, give Florida's up on a Barry a, Trotz team. No, you can't give up on a Barry Trotz team. But Florida's a very good team. Carolina's playing lights out, and the Chicago Blackhawks are better than the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, I was just gonna say they were gonna uh, be the next on the no, list. Um, you you have a team in where. I think I, I said this in my one video. The Bowmans could pull some random dude off the street and tell me he's going to score 40 goals, and at this point I'll just be like, okay, that checks out. Yeah, um, right, we're good. <laughs> where, where, like, they just get anybody, um, and it just works. Where the only guy that has struggled in net this year, and honestly with the way they're playing defense now, if they put Delea back in net, he probably would actually look half these. I was just going to say, um, yeah. But you have uh, Malcolm Subban finally coming to his own. He's only played four games, but is playing well in them. And in three of them, played like he was freaking Carey Price. Uh, in the one game, he struggled. Then all of a sudden, he turned into Carey Price in those three other games. Um, then you have Lankadin, who's one of the best goalies in the league with a 2.59 and a 9.21. So uh, he's emerged. Uh, the Bowmans were talking him up, and it, it really hit. Uh, it definitely uh, helped him. It seemed like it pumped him up, and he's doing really good. Obviously, Patrick Kane is going off again. Duncan Keith is doing what he has to do at the age of 37, and he's yeah. doing it. Successfully, Zadorov's having one of his best seasons. Yeah, uh, Patrick which, Kane, I believe, is on a 13-point thir streak. He's, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, thirteen game point streak. So I mean, yeah, man. Who knew? He's having guys step up. You got Kurashev. You got in the fourth doing well. Pius Suter, you brought from overseas. They got a good overseas guy that's filling in on Tay's line between yeah, right? Kane right now and playing well. So uh, he's a guy that'll move down to a two center, obviously, whenever Jonathan Taze is able to play again. But yeah. uh, he's doing well filling in. And you got the guys like Nylander, Shaw went out again. You got guys that have not been in, but you're still able to perform at this level. Kubalik is doing good again. And his exactly. second season, no sophomore slump for him, getting good assists. Strom went down day to day with a concussion, but he's playing well again. And it's only day to day with a minor one. So hopefully he'll be back sooner. Yeah. And, um, Suter's doing great. Uh, Linus w or Lucas Walmark, excuse me, is a, a guy that's a pretty underrated guy that plays scrappy on the four check and a decent defensive guy who chip in some on offense and with the right players on his line probably could chip in a bit more. So they got like that decent filled out team where guys have stepped up to make it more filled out, like the Kurashevs of the world, comps yeah. on, on Mark's playing his best season, Matthias Janmark. There, the Brinkett's obviously a developing star, yeah. so he's playing well. So you got guys that are doing it there, and it seems like they're going to consistently keep doing it. So they'll probably be a team that might just miss, or they will be probably the last team to make it. You know, so much for a rebuilding in Chicago. I mean, I, 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 if this is rebuilding, gosh, I'd hate to see what happens if they start from the ground up. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, because they came right out and said that we're rebuilding, and well, well, gosh, um, okay, cool, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I, I guess you're doing something good up there because we'll whatever be you're building, and then and then at the end of a uh, freaking May, all you hear, and the Blackhawks have won the Stanley Cup. You're just like, oh, <laughs> if that happens, uh, you know, anything can happen. But if that happens, um, <laughs> look, I already know that I'm not the prognosticator at all in any of this. Uh, but if that happens, man, I'll tell you what, that would be, that would be quite amazing if the Chicago Blackhawks would win the Stanley cup this year. Now I, mean, I honestly, because I always separate homership from, especially because I knew I wanted to get into this field. So I ingrained that in my brain at, as young as I could, separate your homership from your sports talk, except for when you're going homer for that take. That's right. Uh, so um, I've always been a fan with my two main sports that I became really a fan of the overall game to admire certain players and certain yes. teams that the way they craft them. Uh, I've always admired what the Bowmans are able to do. Now, I didn't yes. enjoy the beat us in the Stanley Cup, of course. Of course not. But, but – I'm not going to now all of a sudden hate one of my favorite players because he scored a weird angle goal 
in the Stanley Cup to beat us. Like, that's not a reason why I think I should hate somebody. Um, so uh, that's why I still very much like the hockey game of the way. I mean, the dude had a goal the other night that the puck went to him on a lucky bounce. He just spun around yeah. and shot a backhander through the wickets of the goal, like between yeah. this of the yeah, goal. Yeah, yeah. He do anything he wants on the backhand. He, like Crosby, uh, has one of the more impressive backhands in the history of hockey. Wherever he gets in the backhand, the goalie's like, Oh, please, Lord, just help me save this puck. Uh, he's, it's one of those ones where he puts all his hands and his arms out and closes his eyes and just hopes that the puck hits something. <laughs> yeah, you make yourself big and just... Yeah, go. right, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, just put all your pads out and sprawl funny. out and close your eyes and hope it hits something. <laughs> and McDavid, and McDavid, because McDavid also is scary as heck when he's coming in on a goaltender because he's going at 95 miles per hour straight for you. And yeah, then exactly. He it stops on a dime somehow and does a move, and you're just like, I think my life just flashed before my eyes. <laughs> like, wow. like, did I see that? Like, you're still watching. You're still watching him stop, right? Like, you're, you're, st- he's already scored and skating back to the bench, and you're still watching him stop in front of you. Like, woo, okay. <laughs> yeah, like it, it's ridiculous how much he can uh, rush the zone. Where I get what uh, JJ was talking about, where that obviously probably will, like Ovechkin did that, and they weren't able to get over the hump. He'll probably have to tone it back in order to actually win a cup. But they also need more blocks on their team to be able to win a cup, too. I don't think uh, even if he does that this year, they're going to win the Stanley Cup. Yeah, no, yeah. Mike Smith turns into the Mike Smith of old and doesn't let that weird angle (laughs) go like yesterday where I'm just like, Mike what are you doing? <laughs> like, like, like in a disappointed like parents. Yeah, voice. right. Like, what like, are you doing? Hey, stop. <laughs> no, but um, that's uh, that's just the way it is. I do like Smith for his career. He's always been that fun puck handling goaltender. They're always the fun ones to watch. I can pass it around the ice. Um, I always like the part. I always like that. He's getting a bit better because not at passing, but at stopping it along the boards. He seems to actually put his stick down and stop it a lot more consistently now rather than having it go through and around and then you have to get back in front as quick as possible. But exactly. um, I think uh, there's some goalies that obviously are solid at that. Ottinger's a guy to watch if you like puck moving guys, the young guy in uh, Dallas. He's a guy that enjoys being able to move the puck a little bit. And then in terms of backup netminders, whenever Alex Stalock is put in a game, he gets put in games. Honestly, the way that he sticked around is, well, one, his personality is great. But two, also because he's able to command, like he kind of can QB a bit because he's one of the best puck-moving goaltenders when he's in a game. Okay. So that's okay. what's kept him around a bit, too, where he's a guy, too, a cheapy-type backup. I wouldn't mind once Moose goes on if he's still in the game, someone like him or a guy that looked like he's bringing his career back uh in Jersey, working hard at it in Arendelle, like those guys that always have that great work hard, play harder mentality. Uh, those are guys you like to have on your team. I agree. I agree 100%. Um, can't go wrong with that. And, you know, I always I always thought that that's what kept Brodeur in New Jersey for as long as it did because he was so good yeah. at moving the puck. You know what I mean? That it didn't matter it, even if you were on the power play or not. It didn't matter because he was going to be that extra defenseman back there for New Jersey that you would never, you would never be able to get. Your deep in. was all right at it too. Uh, yeah, Marty, Marty was all right at it. Yeah. So, but I mean, you know, it it is what it is, and uh, I, I like seeing the the goaltenders being able to move the puck like that. Um, that adds a different dimension to the game, um, and and it it, it adds another. Uh, all right. To Moose is actually pretty decent when he's actually in zone and he's been in the zone uh, all the, the, thus far this season. And he's supposed to start tonight. I think he's going to have a good game against the Rangers. Who I think looking, so, too. Obviously. So I think, so um, too. I think he's been um, performing. Honestly, he's a surprising player in the league because I expected him to do well. But he's performing like the best backup in the NHL or the second best backup in the NHL right now, where he's always been that great security blank and not the guy you consider the, at Yaro Halak backup. Left. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. He's not he's like not a 1B. Halak right now. So that's why I think um, if he can continue this, the Flyers are going to be perfectly fine until Hart with the new 
it seemed like I read an article where they said he changed his technique a bit to not be as vulnerable to some shots. Well, you have to learn a new technique. It's like when a pitcher changes his uh, rotational move. Takes a little time. You don't just all of a sudden turn into Cy Young as soon as you trade for <laughs> and change your motion. So it, it, you're not going to turn into yeah. second coming of uh, Belfort as soon as you change your motion or something like that. Like you're going to have to take a little bit yeah, to right. get Give that the kid left. a little break. Um, so I think um, that's just the way it is. And you got to give them some time. But having Moose is huge. Having even a Lion who I wouldn't be surprised because other teams have done it. If when we get guys back and healthy, if we get cruising a bit, just because all you're doing on the taxi squad is nothing other than practicing. So yeah. if you find a game to actually put him in, I wouldn't be surprised if that happens since other teams have done it with their third stringers and they've seemed to um, have done it uh, so they can get them in some games to get their feet wet. And there's teams you can do that against still. So I agree. I agree. I agree. And, and that would be nice to see that too, because uh, Leon needs more uh, of a body of work to look at. Um, he has a very small yeah, body of work. The Flyers. Like what they pronounce lion. Yeah. Yeah, wh- however you want to call it. Alex Line, Lion. Yeah. <laughs> but or he needs. Lion, you know, and if you look up Alex Lion, some phone backgrounds you can get have a roaring lion. And then it oh, really? Fr- yeah. All right. All right. Okay, cool. <laughs> but, uh, it's like, a, it's like a, a Lion King lion, and then it's just him oh. point. <laughs> oh, there you go. All right. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, hey, we would uh, also like to uh, shout out, though, that um, our our very own Professor Joe might be uh, covering the Flyers game tonight, yeah? Yeah, yeah, that will be this evening at 7 o'clock, like I tweeted out. Uh, check it out on my Bork6789 Instagram and my uh, Twitter, which is jjbork 26 I'll be putting pictures on Instagram, obviously, and then cool, tweeting cool. stuff uh, during the yeah, game. Yeah, man. Be checking the- that out. Can't yep, wait to that, see that. I mean, that's yeah. that's through that's through the sister site of Flyers Nitty Gritty that you got that uh, that great gig from that. You know, so big thanks to FlyersNittyGritty.com. Big thanks to yep. Jamie Bascal, yep. um, yep. all them guys over there for sure. So we always like to see the guys that we have on our shows that get get the opportunity to go and cover games because that that gives that gives us more of a. Um, believability it gives us more of a better reputation because yeah. we actually have guys that do cover those the cover the games you know what i mean so we're not talking about things because we're, we're looking at things through something else we're actually talking about things because we have people at the game you know what i mean so yeah and i'm um one of our main um me and toby one of our main lehigh people so i'm more doing it from the roots level up to the major league exactly level to- exactly to prospect and also watch like i said i'm going to start an ahl podcast soon through our channel and i'll probably also um start do one through my youtube channel because then i also put everything on nitty gritty too so it gets yep. double brings the, uh, right. love That's to right. everybody um <laughs> and um you're able to you know spread the love around an old exactly uh, exactly but i wanted to shout that out though yeah. i wanted to shout that <laughs> um, out though. so yeah. joe joe's a I, Joe's one of Joe's one of the, the the better writers out there. Joe's one of the better um, guys out there, as far as that's as far as I'm concerned. Um, that's why he's part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network because of what he brings to the table. We don't call him the professor for nothing. All right. So how about this, professor? We covered the NBA. We covered the NHL. There's a lot of stuff going on right now in the NFL, isn't there? Even though it's the end of February. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, obviously, uh, when you trade a quarterback um, like Deshaun Watt, well, first of all, the Eagles obviously traded Wentz for a third-round pick and a uh, conditional second, okay. uh, which could become a uh, first. And then um, the Texans moved Deshaun Watson to the Dolphins, Um which, of course, uh, was a trade that I ended up doing a video on on my Sports Fanatic News YouTube channel. Oh, so that actually went through then? They could get it, hasn't gone through yet, but if that goes through, they move. Into okay, the okay, that I, trade's not official. Yet. All right, because I don't understand that move because you have Tua down there in, 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 in Miami, 
Okay, why would you bring in Deshaun Watson, who's a who's okay? In my opinion, Deshaun Watson is a starting quarterback in the NFL on any team that he would like to be on, as far as what I'm concerned. Okay, and if you have Tua Tungabailoa down there in Miami, why would you bring this guy, who's definitely going to be slotted as the starter? Whoa! Did they trade? They didn't trade Tua. What? Is that part of the deal? I would, ass- I would assume if they got watching, they would trade Tua because there's no point I keep him Tua. That's what I mean. Why would you? I, I, well, I hey man, stranger things have happened. I mean, I this is all new to me. I I, I just thought that they released Deshaun Watson or that he requested a trade, and or as far as I knew, he had requested a trade, but I, I didn't hear anything else after that. Okay. Um, that he was. Yeah, I don't think anything's. A, the only thing when I look it up, it says um, a thing of Texans trade Watson to. It says uh, that's a high. Oh, okay, so it's a high possibility, but not okay. definite. Okay, right. so that's so that's just the potential. Because the article's phrase is Texans trade Watson to okay. Dolphin. But, okay. Um, uh, I do kind of understand the Carson Wentz move. I do kind of understand that. Okay. Because you you want to get the new coach with the new quarterback. And and Jalen Hurts, I think. I would understand it better if we knew that. That's the thing where um, that's why everybody um, that's been talking about this doesn't understand anything where I, I just did a video too on why I think the Eagles should build around Jalen Hurts and I believe in Jalen Hurts. The problem is the team has no idea what the hell they're doing. Yeah, so that, that's a good that's way to put it. Have, that's where you have big problems when you have a team like Tyrone Johnson, who's Mike Missanoi's producer, says this all the time. It's hard to keep like believing in someone I just do. Cause I, I, he's one guy. I don't even watch college football that much. I would try to watch cause I like the way he played with his smarts and everything and figured it out from there and used his athletic ability, but his smarts first and foremost, and didn't run around really nilly. He was always still looking for a pass downfield and not first and foremost, trying to run. I liked that. Um, but I think uh, you have to have a team that actually believes in you and doesn't run you on a carousel ride, just like they did with uh Carson Wentz, like all, all it was was this one big uh, amusement park freak show that was like you signed him to a contract, and then like a couple months later, all of a sudden you're like, you know what, this guy ain't it. Let's uh, draft Jalen Hurts in the second round and uh, have a good competing starting quarterback uh, behind him and say for a quarterback factory. Where, like I said in my video, this isn't baseball. This isn't hockey. It's one thing to have a goalie factory because you want to have as many good goalies because then they can become trade value. It's one thing to have a pitching factory because you want to have as many pitchers and then they can become trade value. In football, all they do is sit there. There's, it's not like you can loan them to the CFL or do something where they're going to start. That would not be a half bad idea, actually, if they thought of that idea. But um, there's no way to get them to start. So you got to be able to do something that makes more sense for a team where now you realize what it was. It was honestly one of the few things that Max Kellerman has ended up being right on, which is the Wait, fact. Wait, I better write this down. You're giving credit to Max Kellerman? Whoa. Which is, which is the uh, fact that um, the Eagles drafted Jalen Hurts knowing he was going to be either competing or their future starter. And that's what ended up happening. They got rid of Wentz a year after they traded or traded, uh, drafted Jalen Hurts, and then traded Wentz for not nearly as much value as what you got him for. You gave up boatloads of picks with extra carrot gold on them, basically, to get Carson Wentz. You up to yeah. the carrot gold, basically, yeah. on top of all these draft picks. That's how much value you gave them. So. Uh, you probably also opened safes that were not open for 45 years in order to give them that much value. Like, that's how much you gave up for when, and you got back a conditional pick, which he has to play 70% of the snaps, which obviously if they're not successful, he won't do, but obviously you want to see what he can do out there, and you wish him success. And also for fans that don't, you have to wish him success, otherwise you're not getting a first. So Yeah, right. You yeah, you hope he does well. So I think uh, it was a good move because he was done with the organization you – you can't usually buy or earn back trust when it gets that crunched yeah. up. 
and, and, rip and apart. Indianapolis was the perfect spot for him because it reunites him with Frank Wright, who was the yeah. offensive coordinator for Philadelphia when they went to the Super Bowl. The funny right? thing is, he enjoys like playing with Wright and his mentality where he got us there that year. But other than that year, I know um someone brought this up that his stats were not at, his stats were actually a little bit better in QBR and certain things with Al Frank. Yeah, it's yeah. Interesting uh, what it is there, but he does like his coaching motto, so maybe that'll help him. Out. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll see. You know, I mean, uh, the fact that uh, J.J. Watt was released, um, he has been an unhappy camper. You know, I, I would like to know what's going on down there in Houston because first the coach gets fired, right, and he was actually the general manager and the coach. And and then they had the guy before that was uh, Deontay uh, um, Haskins or, or or Hawkins or whatever who who wanted out, right? And he got traded, and they got nothing for him, right? And now, yeah, yeah, yeah awesome. and now and now Deshaun Watson wants out. JJ's out. The coach was fired. What's going on down there in Houston? <laughs> well, their their team is obviously um, in. A very big uh, disconnect, and that That's has a, a lot to, put. to do with uh, ownership. But yeah, I'm with when you. you can't trust the owner, you're not going to go. To, and it also has to do with Bill O'Brien, because Bill O'Brien was a terrible GM. When I he agree. just coached, he was actually half decent. But Agreed. as a general manager, he was terrible. No he good. pulled a Chip Kelly and destroyed his franchise. Exactly. Um, he, so, tried to be, he tried to be Bill Belichick because that's where he came from. Right, he was part yeah, of that. And nobody else, nobody as to this point has been able to um, emulate Bill Belichick. Oh, that's exactly um, right. So I think um, they're going to have to retool it here. I don't think they're going to be able to keep Deshaun and save that um, marriage at this point, where I think that's kind of already pretty much has both people with the divorce papers that are just sitting on a table unsigned somewhere. Yeah, um, I'm with so, you. Yeah, and they're um, all bo- like, they're both sitting across from each other with their hands folded, waiting for somebody to pick up the pen to sign the paper. Yeah, you know, right. yeah. <laughs> um, it's like, so you going to do this first? No, how yeah, about you? No, 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 no how no, about you? Uh, no, like, no, no, you do it now. So, uh, but um, I think they're going to have to move him. I think it'll be the right decision. I do think the best move is to Miami because you can get to it. You can get a high overall pick because even though Miami was good, they traded for a pick. So you can get a high value pick. I think it was the third overall pick. So you get that, and you also get Tua. You can build the team then around Tua and focus on getting him receivers. Yeah, I'm with you on that, but I just add think- value in Florida. Yeah. Well, I think Florida wants to win now because the Dolphins haven't been good in years. They don't want to wait for Tua to develop. They would rather trade Tua. But then, why would you draft him? An MVP. Why would you well, draft him? I think you would wait for him to develop, but once you realize you can get what you think Tua will become if he hits his highest value, you might as well go get him because he's only 25. Deshaun okay, but I, I think that Tua is going to be better than Deshaun Watson because I think Tua has a better arm. Yeah, but he doesn't have as accurate of an arm as Deshaun Watson. Like Tua, well, not that Deshaun Watson has the most accurate arm at either. At the NFL level. Like, Deshaun's pretty accurate lately in the last couple of seasons. He's got more accurate. Where Tua, last year, the biggest surprising thing for him was the inability to actually accurately throw past 10 yards. Where that was something he was more consistent at in college. Where usually that translates. Where he has to pick up better the defenses in the NFL. I think the Dolphins with the good, solid defense they have, that they have the money to add more to, they can add more to the receiving core. They are more, let's get a guy that can win us a couple in the next few years without waiting three more years for him to actually hit his prime. So I that's think why that's it doesn't, but, but see, that's why it doesn't make any sense to me why you would want to why you would want to get Deshaun Watson to come in there when you already have Tua, and instead of going through all that mess and rigmarole to try to get somebody else to come in here and relearn the system and relearn everything and blah, blah. drafted Tua just for seeing that the Texans were going to completely screw up and knowing that he would have the value to Okay, I, I mean, I get that. You, you, you know, you, you're not going to be able to see those kinds of things, but I still don't when, – when the Dolphins have the, the availability to get – players that can help Tua instead of replacing Tua. You see what I mean? That's what I'm trying yeah, to get I at. I mean, I think for me, it's Deshaun Watson for me. Like, he 
put up MVP level stats for a team that had a bunch of like random dudes running around here for the time that you never heard of. It, Pretty much catching the football. So if he was on a good team, and and also I was kind of annoyed that the Texans suck because I bet on Deshaun Watson to win the MVP for this season, and he put up MVP stats, but you all did nothing. Um. So uh, anyway, moving on from. Uh, <laughs> He's not Sean bitter, Watson, folks. He's real, really, Sean, he's not. Sean Watson is a very good um, quarterback that, for me, I don't know if Tua will reach that. Because Deshaun, for me, is top five. I don't know if Tua will be top five. I think Tua could be top 10 to 15. And I think that's max because Tua's more of a let me run to run sometimes guy, where he will still look down the field, but more than Deshaun. He'll take off and take his eyesight off. I saw that a lot last year. Where watch, yeah, but I think that's coaching. Like but I think that could be coaching, because I think you're going to see. And as you've seen, like you saw it with uh, Russell, you saw it with Mike Vick, you you've even seen it with Carson Wentz. You see it with all the quarterbacks, even Lamar Jackson. Well, Russ see- does a good job of moving his uh, or keeping his head downfield. He's probably one of the best at that. Right, but what I'm saying is, is that what you see with the quarterbacks that that are good with their legs, right? The first year they come out and all they are is about their legs, and then they realize that, well, wait a minute, I can't win every game, I can't make every play with my legs, I have to use the other that's assets. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I think that's what you're going to get with Tua, because this was his first year. Well, the thing you know is- what I mean? If he gets to hit Lamar, that's still not Deshaun because Deshaun Watson, because he can throw more consistently down the field than Lamar Jackson. Yeah, I would have, I would take Deshaun Watson every day. Yeah, the same level. So I think the Lamar is a guy that's towards the elite level where Deshaun, you know, is at the elite level. Okay, I got you. Lamar's like basically here's elite, and Lamar's like that. Yeah, Um, yeah. Okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah. Like, like a like way just a where once he away. yeah yeah where like <laughs> if he gets that throwing more consistent that's when he's full house in the uh, elite yeah. which is also I'm, a good team. I'm with, you. I'm with you. Look, I, I'll give it up to you. You know, I, I honestly think that we that we might actually see. I, I thought there would be more of a play for Deshaun Watson. I thought there would be more. Uh, the teams like Dallas would be trying to, to grab for him or even maybe like uh the the Raiders might be trying to grab him or even Jacksonville gosh somebody gosh pick a team that doesn't have a quarterback you know but um, yeah uh Jacksonville it depends because I feel like they're a team that's defense oriented usually like that's just been when the Jags have been at yeah their that's true kind of but their defense has dropped off and you have a game years. manager where I do feel like Minshew is a game manager so I mean yes. I feel like if you want to just have a guy that's going to win you the 10 to 12 but not do it in a very sexy way Gardner Minshew can be that Patrick esque game manager that's going to make some of those mistakes because he takes risks, but he can manage the game fairly well. Where it depends what way you're trying to go there. If you're trying to create a dynamic offense, you'll want to get somebody else. If you're trying to build around your defense and win that way, like look at Chicago. Rex Grossman got them to the Super Bowl. He was nothing special. Nope. They had a very good defense, and Rex Grossman <laughs> got them to the Super Wait, Bowl. Wait, hold on. So, I'll, I'll do you one better. I'll Trent go Dilfer. you, Trent Dilfer. <laughs> yeah, I don't even think he threw a touchdown pass in the first seven games of the season. He didn't have to. They had good running. They had a good defense. What the yeah, heck <laughs> it was just I mean, he was just a statue going. Okay, we have a quarterback, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. He's back there. <laughs> He's got the ball. <laughs> but, All right. Whatever. Yeah, no, him and Rex, yeah, those are probably guys. And then obviously Nick Foles won us our lone Super Bowl here in Philadelphia. Yeah, Wouldn't but be the he guy. played his butt off. He did, but it's definitely not the guy you would expect to tout as winning your lone Super Bowl. True. And then even in the Super Bowl, he played his butt off. In the Super Bowl. You know, I mean, God, yeah, hey, Brady man. Took 500 and some yards. And he won the damn MVP. That's what I mean. So, I mean, against Brady. And and when you're in a shootout like that with, with somebody like that and you do better than the than the other guy, hey, all right. Uh, I'm also a little bit intrigued. Most people consider 
excuse me, the goat. Uh-oh. That's when you know. Yeah, that's true. That's when you know. But but like, Joe, that's when you know you just have a magical touch here. Where's Joe? Joe's disappeared again. Oh, did the picture go away? We're playing Where is Joe? <laughs> <laughs> we get to see <laughs> this really cool little Philly's hat and everything, but we don't get to see Joe. I had water go down the wrong side anyway, so it's probably better for the time being. The camera went out for a split second. <clears throat> there we go. Um, pulled a uh, Stephen A. Smith. Uh oh. Tried to drink my coffee and went down the wrong pipe. Okay. Um, you're supposed to breathe it, not drink it. Yeah, yeah, that's so. Don't see you. Usually a more um successful. Oh, there you go. You're supposed to drink your beverage, not <clears throat> eat. Yeah. There um, you go. Are you all right? But Foles, Foles has always had Foles magic here at Philly. That's, That's why some people want to trade for him back. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's going to work. It I think will be interesting. That magic is gone. If you bring Foles back, he should be the backup. Yeah. But yeah. then, as soon as Hurts makes a mistake, you're going to hear, oh, my God, Nick Foles is on the bench. Nick Foles. I love Nick Foles. Nick yeah, Foles. why isn't Nick I Foles? I should have playing? married Nick Foles when he was here in Philadelphia. <laughs> like, like, you're going to have everybody saying all those things. Yeah. So they're going to want him in. And that's why I don't think you should create that headache for yourself. If you want a good backup as a game manager, get a guy I've mentioned or a guy along those lines like a Fitzpatrick that just knows how to be a backup, been around the block. Exactly. Gets done when needed. Case Keenum's kind of the same thing if you trade for him. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with you on um, that. Get someone along those lines. If you want to get a younger guy that you think you can mold if you don't want to give up a lot of assets, maybe someone that if you can get with the right coaching since it seems like Denver might go elsewhere if you want to create I don't love QB competition I think they're more counterproductive than productive in my own opinion but a quarterback I've always liked since college just because when he's at his best he's also good here and plays through that way like Hurts but is not nearly as athletic as Drew Locke who had a bad sophomore season but in his first seven or whatever games it was in his rookie season, threw six touchdowns to two picks. So if you can get him back more to that mode, you can have a good competition here and figure out who's going to be your future piece. And I think at this point, Locke's value dipped down to about a third. I think if you're trading for Drew Locke, you can just throw him a third or maybe even – I would actually start at a fourth and then see what they say and then yeah. go – Give you a yeah, turn. I've also been seeing too that uh, what's the guy from the Jets, um, uh, uh, Darnold, Sam Darnold, yeah. Yeah. Uh, might potentially be on the block as well too. I feel like the Darnold's going to be a lot more though because people know Darnold's only been like that because of the Jets. Like everybody knows that it's the Jets' fault that Sam Darnold because he put together numbers at back ends of two seasons that for the last few games of each, he was one of the more productive QB. So people know the writings on the wall was the and the fact that Adam Gates looked like he was high as a kite half for the time he was trying to do his job. Like, people brought that up, where when he showed up for his press conference, he's just like... Wow. Like, looking all over the... So, oh. I think... Um, I think the Jets just don't know how to hire people. Since our GM went there, our assistant GM... <laughs> hasn't done as good as they hope douglas and um, they certainly don't know how to draft yeah they don't know how they definitely don't know how to draft yeah um you have to build around your quarterback they never did they just kept getting guys that were more defensive based and never got more offensive exactly. weapons guys they did did not work out so. i mean when they drafted mark sanchez mark sanchez wasn't a bad quarterback Right. I mean, for real, he really wasn't a bad quarterback. He just played on a really bad team that had nobody around. He had nothing. He had no running game. Well, he had the years he did. He was basically I think Sanchez was basically a better version of Rex Grossman. He was nothing special. But right. Make some decent plays. He was but a game was manager. Really just a game, was really just a game manager. Yeah. yeah. 
you know, but but that's still better than anything that they've had in the last couple of years, with the exception of Sam Darnold, obviously. But they had no team around him then. They don't have any team around Sam Darnold. They tried to have Le'Veon Bell, but, well, if you have Le'Veon Bell on your team and he's known for being a patient runner and a, and a guy that can catch the ball out of the backfield, well, if you don't have an offensive line that can block for him, then he's obviously not going to be effective running the game. Or running the ball, yeah. and if you don't put him in the offense to 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 do those swing out passes and the, put him in the slot or anything like that, and he's not catching the passes, well, then you're not taking advantage of him. No, no, I completely agree with that. But um, as we're um coming towards uh, the wrap up here, because I do have to talk to Jamie before I get into covering the game. And uh, okay, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we can go into baseball to round out for our baseball group of fans, which is uh, pitchers and catchers reported, regular guys reported for workouts this week. Um, here in Philly, for my Philly people, McCutcheon definitely looks quicker again, uh, coming off of his second year back from ACL surgery. So if he's able to field more like two years ago in the final year of yeah. his contract, that would be huge for the team because they would get more consistent fielding because the pitchers they added in Matt Moore and Chase Anderson are both – guys that get a lot of ground balls, get some contact, so you want to be able to have more consistent fielding. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting uh, for my hometown team. Bohm's in his second, first full season, uh, second uh, season, and uh, you're going to see what he can do. If he can play third base adequate, I said this when I'm chasing the pennant podcast, all you need is him adequate because his offense is going to be that good. There you um, go. Segura needs to be more consistent on defense. Hitting he was good at last year. He needs to be consistent on defense. Hopefully Hoskins comes back to his full effect. Harper's Harper. And then center field, you got to figure out who's going to do it there. And then you know you know what you're going to get from JT when he's healthy. Right. And then Knapp played good as a backup last year. So will Knapp stay consistent? Will Matt Moore pitch well back again in the majors after dominating Japan, which is a offense first league? So yeah. you have to see those things. <laughs> I actually watched some of those uh, some of those uh, baseball games that they had in Japan there that they were running, or, or they were co- that Korean. Was the Korean, league. Korean, yeah. So I watched some of those Korean baseball games. Man, all right, uh, that's pretty respectable out there, man. They they got it going on. They they know what the, the, the those teams down there are pretty dedicated, and the fans down there are pretty dedicated. That's for sure. Um, I'm I'm excited too because when when you when you start talking about baseball, we start thinking about spring training. And when you start talking spring. about spring training, you start start thinking about spring, right? Okay, well, so now um, Joe just disappeared again. But while he's gone, we're going to say this. There's some games coming up here at the end of the month, and it looks like almost every team's going to be involved in, in about some of About the 28th. By yeah, the right 20th. around the 28th yeah. is when we're going to start getting some of the – some of the uh, you know spring league games playing and some of the the grapefruit leagues playing and stuff like that. So um, that's going to be exciting. Uh, do you think that uh, do you think that uh, the Nationals they won the the pennant last year? Yeah. Huh. The the pennant who the 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 Nationals won the pennant last year. No, that was two years ago. Two years ago. Okay. And last year the pennant was. The World Series um, last year was, um, what's it called? Um, I kind of remember in my head because I stopped watching it because I got fed up with uh, the Phillies by the time we got to the World Series. Rays and Dodgers, that's right. The Dodgers beat the Rays. Yeah. Dodgers beat the Rays. All right. So the Dodgers are the defending champs. We know that. Historically, New York spends money to get teams. We know that historically, Boston spends money to get their team. Yeah. Again, kind of at this point. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, kind of. Uh, You know, uh, we know that they have in the past. Exactly. We we know they have in the past. Is there is there going to be anything special with baseball this year? Like with what they did last year? Are they going to delay the start? Is there going to be any kind of uh, shortened season or or anything like that? Because last year they only played sixty two games. They're going. They're going. Uh, they um, Joe Biden, which honestly I feel like had something to do with the fact that he's a Phillies fan. I'm not going to lie. I think that was a Homer ask uh, asked them to delay it a month, which I honestly think was I'm a Phillies fan. Let me give my team more time to sign more free agents to compete with the Nationals, uh, Braves, and uh, Mets. Okay. Uh, uh, I honestly think he went full sports mode there. Um, 
because he didn't have, he literally even said before, I think everything's safe to start on time. And then just went, wait, I'm a Phillies fan. What the hell am I saying? And I'm like, let me say, but um, after that, they decided the Players Association wanted to start in time because leagues are ongoing now and are figuring out ways through COVID. And most of them, people have put in requests to have fans soon, like Philly, for example, put in a request to have fans by, I think it's even next week. Um, So if that request gets approved, you're going to have some fans in Wells Fargo for both Sixers and Flyers by even maybe next week. So there's stuff that's moving in the right direction. You already have some in Lehigh and Wilkes-Barre and uh, Hershey. There we go. Um, And then Jersey is approving more fan attendance. So you can have some stuff there soon if you want to. So it's and we do know, and we do know that Florida and Arizona and Texas, they've had it. Yeah. They've, they've had, had, they've allowed fans since the, yeah, the beginning of the NHL. Uh, so it's opening up and for opening day, they expect fans to whatever the capacity is at the point of when April hits. Cause they don't okay. know exactly like if the regulations will open up more by then, if they stay the same, hopefully they don't lessen uh, what they're going to do at that point and where they're going to be at at that point. That's kind of what it is. It seems like we're moving in a good direction to definitely have fans for opening day at what capacity. I don't think that's new. Okay. So they're not going to, they're not going to shorten the season they're, They haven't changed anything like that. Everything's supposed to just so go like it, normal. As of now, I've, some people wanted the DH to stay in as of now. It's not, but some people you're listening to like Bob Nightingale, who's basically like the guy, like um, one of the top guys, just like a guy like Bob McKenzie is in hockey. Or Pierre, he's basically one of those go-to guys when you're looking for baseball. Said everything, same with Jeff Passan, he's the same. It's yeah, Jeff Passan, I've heard of him, yeah, yeah. yeah fluid until the season starts, because last year they changed stuff a week before. So if they lay out a reasoning when people are like, well, our pitchers aren't as loose because of the weird COVID season, we don't want them getting injured in the batter's box, just swinging the bat, uh, they might end up eventually putting that in. Okay. Okay, because I know that last year they did a bunch of stuff because of the COVID and all that, and they they shortened the season and everything. And I wasn't really sure. Still doing the runners thing. That second. Oh, day. okay. Yeah. Okay. They just don't have the DH. That's something I think they are going to keep in. But as okay. of now, they don't have the DH. But the CBA also expires. This is the final season of the current bargaining agreement. Okay. So, when that, first of all, there's probably going to be a lockout at this point because both sides detest each other. I was uh, going to say, two, it's probably not boding well. Two, um, eventually, when they come to a deal, it's probably going to include a DH. Okay. Okay. I would hope so because that's that to me is a traditional. Um, it's been in baseball for a very long time, and, and I, I kind of like to see that continue on. Um, as well, too. So. Well, no, no, no. There's a DH in the AL still. They just don't right, know. right, right, right. Um, I, universal like it was last season. Okay, all right. So um, I don't know. I'm I'm a fan That's of it. Issue. I'm just a fan of it. Um, I guess call me old school. I don't care. Whatever you want to do, I don't care. Uh, but the fact that we're going to have some baseball and the fact that we're going to have baseball with fans in the stands—that's what I'm looking forward That'd to the nice. most. Yeah, it was yeah. nice having the game I covered for the fan of. Uh, when you were walking in, seeing some fans walking, it was only like 250 people or whatever it was, but still, still, it was nice seeing some people walk in, having it seem a little bit not close to normal because they pack that house. Oh, uh, yeah, the fans are a very popular AHL team, they pack uh, the PPL center. Hell, Reading usually packs their arena, and they're yeah, arena. right, <laughs> but so, um. They, this fan base reps their levels down, and the Phillies fans are pretty similar. Nowadays, you probably rep the minor league teams more than the Phillies because they're better than the Phillies lately. But yeah. um, the, but uh, you have people that rep it through and through. So uh, I know Delaware's team for the Sixers, they get people that travel down there pretty well as well. Okay. Uh, so they're definitely doing it well uh, with everything there. So. I think everything's going well, but when baseball's back, it's exactly what you said. You know, spring's here. You know, the warmer weather. We have a good day today with the sun's finally shining. It got in the 50s. It's melting all this uh, terrible snow. As Steve Nelson, the one guy I listened to for baseball media, wrote on his board, snow sucks when you don't want to do any snow sports. Uh, If you want to do snow, bring bring on the snow. Otherwise, no. 
no, no, I'm no. a snow guy. I'm then a winter guy. Away. So I'm trying to go snowboarding. You, we don't need you. You're not needed. <laughs> um, like, um, so hopefully there's less snow going forward and it feels more like spring because I don't think I've seen my lawn in over a month. Um, uh, I'm actually starting to see big patches of it um, shining through in my in my lawn right now. So. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, trust me. Uh, there, there's caught a couple patches out here for sure. So uh, I tell you what, um, the baseball season is going to be very interesting this year because it's going to be a full season, and it's going to be interesting to see how they deal with the 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 whole COVID thing, the way the NFL did, and the way the NHL has done it. Uh, and then the way the NBA has done it as well, too. So I'm looking forward to how that's going to happen. I'm also looking forward to how just having regular baseball games. Okay. That, that to me is that, that brings back that sense of normalcy that everybody's like, you know, well, I looking think for they might still do. I know it's rumored. They might do those double headers. So you're not in the stadium for as long. Whereas okay. you do it college style where you do the two seven inning games rather than two nine inning games. And then if they go to extra innings, you would hope it only goes to nine innings and becomes a full game. So it adds some security there for how long everybody's in the stadium okay. total. So I think they might end up still doing that. Once that started, I didn't hate it as much as I thought I would. Uh, okay. where I didn't think I, I thought I would just be like, don't bring college into the pros. That's just not the way it's supposed to do. Um, but uh, like in college, it's fine because it's fun to watch it, the, the different strategies they use and stuff. But that's not something that really should come up. But it worked out better than I thought it would. But I don't think it's still something I want once everything's back to normalcy. But for an unnormal time that we're still in, I'm OK with it. I'm with you. I'm with you on that for sure. I agree with that. Well, man, I'll tell you what, uh, we covered all the leagues. We got lots of great information. We got a lot of great stuff. We want to definitely get you out in time here to talk to Jamie so, yeah. that, uh, so that you can uh, get going here to uh, go cover the Flyers for tonight. So we're looking forward to that. Can't wait to hear how that went. And hopefully we'll be uh, celebrating a W tonight. Uh, that would be Yeah, uh, hopefully we'll get a win with Moose and Ned and have the lineup that was projected with Jamie bringing in Carson would be a good move. Yeah, have I agree. Maybe play one of his last games at win, but if he plays well uh, so with the physicality stature, that's what you need against the Rangers. You have some guys like Blackwell who's playing better this season in the lineup who's a scrappy guy, So, yep. among others. So you have to be able to stand up to them, and I think we'll be able to do that tonight with Moose and Ned and put a pretty good effort forward. Agreed, especially with uh, New York Rangers missing Panarin. Um, that's going to hurt them a little bit too. So I'm um, going to be an interesting game. That's for sure. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to your coverage. Uh, uh, as far as that's concerned, um, you can catch me uh, uh, on Twitter at steel flyers at 52. Um, you can catch all of our great stuff at www.steelflyers.com slash link slash sports fanatic news. Uh, you can get Joe's, all of Joe's stuff is all there. All his, all his videos, his YouTube channel, all that stuff is there. All his contacts and everything, get all that stuff there. And um, so uh, really appreciate uh, all that and keep following us and keep hitting the like and subscribe. Peace out. <laughs>